and we're rolling. Hello and welcome to the first ever episode of Inside the Change Room. Today we are joined by a man who's, who started his career in non-league. Um, he got his move into the Football League, which was a boyhood dream, to League One Club Gillingham. He went abroad, took his career abroad to Ireland for Cork City. He come home to Hemel and now applies his trade at Dartford Football Club. Today we are joined by Liam Nash. Liam, hello. Nasty, how are you, mate? Yeah, yeah, all good. As good as I can be. <laughs> <laughs> good as you can be. Um, as you can see, um, next to me, my co my co host is Jacob. Jacob, how are you, mate? I'm good. Cheers. How are you? Yeah, all good, mate. All good. Um, as much as good as we can be in this uh, in this lockdown. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly that. Yeah. Um, yeah, trying to keep trying to keep sane. Um, yeah, Liam. Um, firstly, before we start, kind of talking about how it all started for you. It's it's weird times at the moment, isn't it? And 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 obviously we've we've had a conversation. You're keeping yourself nice, nice and healthy with with Herbalife. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. How how are you doing in these uh, unprecedented times? Um, yeah, of course. Like you know, it's time, health, and and well being comes first. You know, for anyone. Um, but I thought I'd take it upon myself to make the most of this situation. Um, especially you know with my fitness and my health, because obviously you know when when the season does come back, hopefully. I'm above, you know, everyone. I want to feel like I'm above everyone in fit in terms of fitness, um, especially give me that leverage um, against anyone else that's, that's maybe fighting for my position if we go back to pre-season or if we maybe even go back to the playoffs. So, you know, I, I definitely took it as a an advantage, um, this lockdown. I didn't um, see it as a negative. It was a positive uh, for me to work on my own, you know, um, stuff that I need to work on, my own fitness, um, and my, as well as mental well-being, you know, because regardless of what you have, you know, I live in a good home, got a good garden and stuff. Um, a lot of people don't have those advantages. So, you know, but regardless of all that, everyone struggles in their own way. Um, and it's just a good, you know, mental recap, as I call it, um, to, to get myself prepared properly for when this all goes back to normal and I can say that I'm probably in the best shape that I've ever been in um, without a gym um, and feel the fittest I've ever felt so at the minute I can only say that it is going well. <laughs> Good and you said as well like uh, you're, you're managing to cope without a gym like how, how, how different have things been obviously you can't go to the gym you can't go to the training grounds like what sort of things are you doing to keep yourself in shape? Well, of course, yeah. I mean, like for gym, for anyone. I mean, even if you, you you're not in great shape, people love going to the gym for for mental reasons. You know, um, it's good to get away and and get away from the life outside of the gym, work and and home. Um, so that side it is tough because I love going to the gym after work and putting my headphones on and getting a good sweat on, and you know, you really do feel like you, you, you're getting something done. So taking the gym out of my life was actually a massive part of my life, especially football. I mean. Like, like you say, I've had to keep my own regime, kept my own routine, um, do 5K a day. So I make sure I'm up and I've done 5K. Um, do my own online hit sessions now on, on Instagram for everyone to join in. So I do that um, every day. So, yeah, it's, it's sort of like a um, you have to mentally put yourself in a lane um, because if you don't, you, you, you'll sway. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's sort of where I've kept myself uh, mentally as well, just to keep myself straight and, and on the path that I'm looking to, to go towards, definitely. Yeah, I mean, it started... Yeah, let's, let's go back to um, your, footballing, your footballing career then. Um, it started back in 2013 for you um, at your local club, Club Albury Sports. Um, yeah, what made, you, what made you get into football? Um, oh, I've loved football since I was a kid. Um, you know, it's been it was it's been my life since I ever knew. Just playing football wherever I could. Um, as a kid, I used to get every single Premier League shirt that I could get, even if I didn't support them, just because I felt like I, I was good in it. Um, so yeah, it's always been it's always been in my life, and I sort of started taking it seriously when I was around um, the age of ten, eleven. I mean, that's a young age still at this age, but. I knew from then that I wanted to play football for my for the rest of your life. Um, thankfully, at that, that age, I actually got picked up for West Ham. Um, I went there with my still very close friend, um, Josh Cullen, 
he's still there now. Um, so yeah, he's been there for twenty odd years. He's done very well for himself. Um, but that that was sort of when I really, you know, had an insight of, of football and what it was like. Um, unfortunately, it didn't go to plan at West Ham. Um, but then Southend, I spent four years there. After that, um, and really got a proper insight of you know doing the tours. Um, playing at the training grounds, you know, being in and around first team players. Um, and that was around the age of 13, 14. And then 15, got released, um, went into men's football straight away. Um, I didn't really have a choice, <laughs> if I'm honest. My dad um, said to me, look, son, like, you've got the ability to go. He always believed in me, always told me he did. Um, I lost complete and utter belief, especially at that age, you know, being released from a, a club, professional club, um, you think that it's the world's end. And my old man is always he's always backed me and always will. But he said to me, you know, you're good enough to, to go and play at the top level. Um, so he basically just um, we lived in Holbridge at the time, like you said, that was my first team, my first club. We lived in Holbridge at the time, and I was only 15, and I went into train with the reserves. So you know, these are players that are like 24, 25, 26 going on. And I'm a 15-year-old going in and training. And a few of them thought, what the hell was this little kid doing here? Um, I will tell you now, I was so intimidated. I did not know what to do. I even forgot how to cook a football. It was that, that intimidating. Um, wow. But it, it sort of, it, it definitely grew on me. Um, don't get me wrong, it took, it took a while um, to get back to the sort of mindset that I had about wanting to be a footballer. Um, because I, I honestly did get it taken out of me um, completely. I just completely thought that it wasn't for me, uh, what it meant to happen. And then it got to 16 and I, and I grew up not like height-wise or even width-wise, but I grew up mentally very quick um, because I was around older older lads. Um, and I actually made my first team debut uh, at 16 uh, for Holbridge in the Essex Senior League. So, you know, I, I made a hell of a jump uh, for my age. I don't think, yeah, I don't think any player... That Holbridge has done that since at that age, so it was um, a massive jump. But it helped me again. It it pushed me on, and I ended up staying at Holbridge for a couple of years, and then went from there. And of course, soon after. Yeah, I mean, go on, go on, Jay. Go on, well, Michael. I was going to say soon after as well. Like you'd scored, I saw nineteen goals in twenty-eight games in like towards the end of your spell at Holbridge. Obviously, that earned you a move to Billericay Town. Like, how did that come about? How were you equipped that? Yeah, so it actually started, I was, I was a left winger, left midfield player. I actually didn't like playing left midfield at the time. I was always a striker growing up, as you do. You know, you want to score the goal. So, I was actually a striker. Um, and they put me left midfield. Obviously, I didn't have a leg to stand on. I couldn't go in and go, oh, put me up front. You know, I'm a young lad. I can't, I didn't really have the right to say anything. Um, so, I didn't. So, I played left midfield that season. I actually then was put up front halfway through the season because one of our players actually dropped out. Um, and that is where the, the, the second half of the season is where I actually went on and scored all the goals because I went up front. Um, and then Villariki shoe interest. Um, basically, it was like three games left at the end of the season. Um, and I ended up making a move over to Villariki. Um, I ended up signing a two-year contract there at Villariki. I was 18 at the time. Um, didn't go to plan, um, obviously, but it put me in good stead again because um, I actually went on loan, uh, went on loan to Averley, which you um, you two know about, and it sort of grew me from there. Yeah, and of course, he says about growing as a person like Averley. I mean, it resulted in a permanent move for you, and you were also named their captain at quite an early age. Well, how did that sort of responsibility allow you to grow more as a person as well as a player? Oh, yeah, no, definitely. I think uh, I've, I've said this story, I don't know who to, but a couple of times. And my manager at the time, Justin Gardner, um, I have a lot of respect for him because basically it was a, we was Tilbury away and uh, I wasn't captain. This was during the season. Um, our captain got injured and then our vice captain, Ad Seymour, basically I went up to the gaffer before the game and said, look, I want to be your captain today. Um, we hadn't lost in, I think it was, we had not won, sorry, in about three, four games. So we was actually in a little bit of a rut. I thought to myself, if I can captain this team and go and win, then I'm going to make a name for myself at this club. Um, and we went actually, we went and won the game. And <laughs> they were flying at the time as well. And it was just like, 
wow, and I've got the armband then for the, for the rest of the season. So I think that, that that definitely put me in good stead. You know, being 18, being a captain of, of a men's football team, trying to speak to them, you know, give them team talks before the game and motivate them. I think that definitely put me in good stead. And when you're a young player as well and you've got those older players, that's, do you think that's quite an unusual dynamic when you're, like you said, giving the team talks to the older, more experienced players? Oh, definitely. You, you question yourself, you think, are these listening to me? Do they even want to listen to me? Are they even taking <laughs> anything on board? They've got like an extra 10 years on me in experience. So, but then, you know, at the time I was, I was so headstrong with where I wanted to go in my career and my personal belief. It, I just blocked all that out and it just, yeah, like I say, it really did put me in good stead for, for the future. Like you said about being head, headstrong there, Nashi, that do you think that because you were so headstrong and, and whatever you were saying to those older experience guys, that you said it was such belief that they had no real kind of any way other than not to believe you? Cause, because obviously you had so much belief in yourself that it obviously then rubbed, rubbed off on the other players, didn't it? Yeah. And I, it, I'll tell you what probably did help is that I was doing very well. So, you know, it, it wasn't like I weren't performing um, yeah. and couldn't say anything, but I had the performances to back it up. So, like you say, I was so ambitious, and I think that they see that, that they actually grew off it as well. Um, and I had a very good team there. There was a great bunch of boys. There was not one bad egg. Um, they was all supportive. Um, so, yeah, and I had obviously a, a manager that put his 100% belief in me, if I'm honest. Um, so yeah, it, like I say, it just put me in good stead for for the future. Yeah, we talk about the, the future just after a- Averley. It's you moved on to Morden Tiptree um, in in 2016. Um, yeah, what a record this is! Uh, 33 goals in 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 41 games. Um, yeah, it kind of that that was where you put your name firmly out there on on the market and like I've I've arrived here and and I'm ready for the next move wasn't it oh yeah it was <laughs> it was quite funny cuz um you know I was my manager at the time Kevin Horlock for me I, I I can still say it to this day and and I will do it he's the best manager that I've ever played under um and I I'll always speak the truth and I can confidently say that he got the best out of me as a player um he gave me the freedom. He gave me the license. He knew me as a player, the ins and outs and everything. He may even made the team play around me. So he would mould the team around me. The formations that he'd do wow. in the change room, you're playing around Nashi, get the ball to Nashi. It literally made the team around me, which brought this sense of belief that I didn't even realise I had. Is that and added pressure, though? It was added pressure, but I like that. I like pressure. I like to feel like I'm the main man. That is when I do yeah. get my, the best out of myself, um, and it definitely like like the stats show and, and the season that I had, it definitely showed that you know it worked. Um, but don't get me wrong, that team that I was in at Malden was probably the, one of the best football insides that I've ever played in, um, bar in Dartford at the minute. <laughs> <laughs> but they were hands down the best technically, uh, the football minded players, the best that I've played in, without a shadow of a doubt. Wow, I mean, then I mean the record that you had at Maud and then propelled you um, to to have interest from four league clubs, um, one being mine um, in in Gillingham. Um, I remember you coming on trial, um, firstly at Gills. Um, pretty sure, correct me if I'm wrong. Your first game for Gills was on trial at Dover. Um, yeah. and you and you went and won a penalty, mm-hmm. um, and then and then you played at you played at Chippenham Town as well, um, when when we won twelve nil, um, <laughs> which, which is quite quite interesting, um, and and yeah, we we kind of walked away from from those two games, all of us fans saying we had to we had to sign you, um, yeah, what? How did the interest come about from from, from Gills and? And was there any other interest from football league clubs? And, and was it just going to be Gillingham? And, and why Gillingham in the end? Um, yeah, so Gillingham were the last team to come in, um, actually. I had wow. uh, interest from Doncaster uh, during the season while I was at Malden. 
Um, I went up there for a week. So my gaffer at Malden let me go up there for a week and train with, with Do uh, Doncaster. Um, so I went up there, nothing come of that. Um, so this was during the season. So obviously I had to go back to, to Malden with, you know, a little bit of regret, uh, a little bit of rejection, sorry, um, yep. Yep. which was tough. Um, but I knew that we still was in, we was in a good position in the league. So it gave me a bit of the motivation to go back and carry on and hopefully get promotion. So I didn't have that in my mind too much. Um, and then I had another interest uh, from Colchester. Uh, they were linked, obviously, with Malden and Tiptree at the time. I think they're still maybe uh, the parent club yep. of Malden. They showed interest. Um, my gaffer at the time, Kevin Horlock, who was actually the 23s coach at Colchester, um, he'd done a lot of plug-in trying to get me in, etc. Um, but that did, sort of didn't go through. Um, so I just I, I came to the conclusion that I wanted to see the season out with Malden without any other interest coming in. Um, so they didn't tell me that anyone was interested until the season was over. Um, and then I actually ended up halfway through Malden's season getting an agent. Um, it wasn't really on my mind until my manager uh, mentioned it because he said that, by the way, at the end of the season, you're going to have some hell of offers coming in. I said, oh, really? He was like, and the best thing for you to do is, is, is probably get yourself an agent. Um, there's going to be a lot of juggling around to do. So I took his advice. Like I had done all year, you know, I trusted him. So I took his advice, uh, ended up going with an agent. Um, and it did help me, don't get me wrong, it did, you know, talking to clubs for me and stuff and, and keeping me he sort of, because we was in the playoffs, um, the, the season extended, obviously. Um, everyone else's season had finished, so the interests were already coming in. So I didn't want to have that on my head while I was going through the playoff position. So he took all that pressure off of me. Um, the playoffs had finished and he basically said, um, I had an interest from Gillingham yesterday, they want you in for a week. I said, perfect, but obviously I want to go. Um, and then ended up, yeah, like like you say, I played a couple of games and, and ended up getting offered a, a two-year contract. What's it like playing under the likes of A.D. Panic as well, who would have given you your first taste of professional football as well? Yeah, I, I always got utmost respect for him for giving me, you know, um, basically presenting me my dream that I've always wanted. Um, he gave me my debut and I'll always be thankful for him for that. Um, it was a great... And uh, yeah, just it's just a shame that it didn't work out for him as much as for me. Yeah, I mean, I still remember um, I actually interviewed you for my channel the morning of your debut at home to South End. Um, I mean, it must have been a bit of a whirlwind for you because, like you like you said earlier on in the interview, that you started off your career at South End, and now here you are walking out of Priestfield, your football league debut against the club that you started <laughs> off with. Um, yeah. yeah, that must have been pretty strange. But also, very, very, um, very, you must be very happy and must have been very proud. Yeah, it was, like you say, very bittersweet um, coming out on your debut against the club that released you when you was a kid. So, yeah, like on that, in that terms of things, it was a sense of, of proudness. Um, I had all my friends there, my family, everyone from around from my area. So, yeah, it was just a... Oh, it was, Probably one of the best, hands down, the best moments of my life, you know, walking out and, and seeing the fans and, and just hearing it and being involved in a in a football league game. So I won't ever forget that feeling. And like I said before to you a few times, I want to get that feeling back. So yeah. hopefully it comes. I'm, I'm being patient and biding my time. And I definitely don't believe now that I'm in my prime yet. So I've still got a lot more to give. And for what was it like being... Go on, Go on Jacob. I was going to say, for you, when you made your step up as well, for you, what was the biggest thing which was a difference between playing in the lower leagues and playing for Gillingham in League One? Was that the physicality or the speed, do you think? Yeah, don't get me wrong. The speed of football was, was obviously greater um, and the quality um, in the training sessions. For me, the biggest change was the dressing room. Um, I obviously had never been in a full-time outfit before. You know, you're with these players all day every day and I didn't <laughs> I couldn't and I didn't get to grips quick enough with the banter in the changing room if I'm honest it sort of uh, to a point it, it, it got to me um, definitely at some stages um, really but uh, yeah yeah it did and I uh, I soon grew to get rid of that and shift it because um, there was like a bit of negativity in that changing room I'm not going to lie um, 
and it took me a little bit of time to get rid of that um, and find the self belief yeah. again. Um, but I found it again, and you know, them things it's a learning curve and it puts you in good stead. Because um, you know, the football banner, you can never ever get close to football banner. I don't care what anyone says, no one is going to go in the changing room and be like, oh, yeah, I'm used to this. Because you're not. <laughs> Yeah, it's but it's borderline sometimes. I'm, I I know. Um, yeah, in terms of that that you said about negativity in that dressing room. Obviously, me myself from point of view, um, it, it was a tough. It was it was tough the year before. Let alone when you arrived, it was even tougher. In terms of, AD eventually then got sacked um, in that October. Um, you spoke about negativity. Was it? And we, and I've spoken to Josh Wright before, and things like that. Was it, was it, almost toxic in 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 that dressing room? And 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 was you disappointed in terms of you you'd arrived at your first football league club, you'd, you'd gone into this dressing room, and then you've come into a dressing room that was was on its yeah was on its last legs with the manager. Was it was it, is it was it a bit disappointing? I think uh, disappointing is uh, an understatement. If I'm going to be honest. It it wasn't what I expected, um, if we're going to be honest. I yeah. yeah, I just it was like, I I don't know. Maybe you know me walking in, being who I am, you know, at the time probably was on my biggest high horse that I've ever been on because of the season that I had, which is understandable. Uh, people maybe took that the wrong way, um, but I'm a down to earth person. I'm, I've never ever, you know, been too big for my boots, and I never will. Um, but maybe I just, at the times, I probably felt like I needed a, a shoulder on, maybe, because I'm new. And don't get me wrong, some of the lads in there, top, top lads, top lads. Um, now Billy Bingham, top guy. Navid, who was one of my boys at the club, top people. Um, but just, like you said, toxic probably is the word, toxic. Um, but I was new to it, so I sort of took it and thought, you know, this is normality. Um, in a changing room of, of a football league because it's my first and it club. Wasn't. So, <laughs> and it probably wasn't. No, it wasn't. Um, it just, yeah, it wasn't like it was a changing room that I've been in before. No way. Where there's like, you know, your teammates congratulating you, pushing you on to do better, um, and helping you to work on things. I mean, it was just very minimal in there, if I'm honest. Put you off a little bit. Did it put you off? It, it did. I mean, put me off probably isn't a word because I was always, once I had that, you know, the season of Malden, I was always determined to get to do better. But it sort of, yeah. it put it stepped me back a bit. It put me a, a couple of steps back to think, whoa, like, is this really what it is? Um, yeah. I didn't realise it was like this. Um, but then good things are not all rosy. So I sort of just took it with a pinch of salt and got on with it and yeah. uh, always kept my head down in training. Um, always worked hard like I always do um, I just unfortunately you know football the way it goes things don't happen and new managers come in etc and maybe you just don't fit their style of play and, and that's what happened probably Yeah 12 games over the two years um, for the Jills um, frustrating probably on your part for, certainly frustrating on from, from from the fans as well I, I, I know for a fact that, um, that that us fans definitely definitely wanted you to be given more of a chance um, and we kind of felt like you wasn't. Your loan spells throughout that kind of two-year period were with Leatherhead, Dulwich and Concord. Um, yeah, was it an opportunity to get out of that environment and and kind of bring your happiness back to back to football? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, it was good to, to actually get out and, and find myself again. Um, and I'll keep, I don't want anyone to feel sorry for me because, you know, the way I say it, but I did lose myself a few times whilst being um, at the club at Gillingham um, and I just needed a sense of finding myself back again because I already had that um, belief um, and you know I've all, I already did it at Malden so I knew that I, even though it's a lower level I knew what I was capable of um, I just had to find it within myself um, yeah I went to Leatherhead found it again was loving it again um, actually got called back um, on my second loan spell uh, early and didn't go to plan again. So, you know, I thought I'm in, back in the same cycle again. Then went out on loan to Dulwich um, and then finally Concord. Um, 
where I realised that, you know, probably my time at the club had gone at Gillingham. I weren't wanted in there anymore in the setup. Um, so I needed really to sort sort of find my next club um, for the next season when I'm out of contract. Um, and I, I sort of really, it did hit me with a ton of bricks because I thought, you know, I'm going back down. Um, I wanted to stay at that level and, and prove myself because I had a lot of people to prove wrong. Like you say, I was getting messages on Twitter that was always from the Jills fans that was just like unbelievable. They were so supportive all the time. There was no negativity towards me at all, which always gave me that lift to think that, you know, other people can see it. Other people can see that I'm working hard and doing everything I can and they don't even see me on the training ground. So it's like, it was a sense that I just needed to go away and prove that, you know, I am still capable of doing this uh, at whatever level I play at. Yeah, I mean, you talk about moving away from Gillingham. You ended up moving country, going to Ireland with Cork City. Um, mm-hmm. what, in, what inspired that move? Um, yeah, it was sort of along the same lines of, of trying to, you know, get, get that love back again. And like you say, it's a dramatic move to go and move country. But I felt like I, had, I sort of had to get away from everything that was going on um, down in this end. Um, we had a little bit of family problems, so I had to sort of, you know, distance myself from that a little bit. Um, I felt like it was probably the right time for me to go and, and venture out elsewhere. So the opportunity of court come up. Um, the agent rang me and said they're interested. So I went over there for a week um, and they signed me within a couple of days. Um, great city, great experience. Unbelievable fans as well. Um, always supportive wherever I go to fans, to be fair. I wonder why that is. <laughs> But um, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, no, it was um, oh, it was a great experience playing at good grounds and that, um, getting the Irish feel, and living with uh, a few Irish lads <laughs> was a right old, uh, right old good experience. Yeah, I bet there was a fu- uh, I bet there was a couple of nights out in Dublin. <laughs> oh, was there? <laughs> yeah, them Irish lads know how to drink. I'll tell you that for a fact. Um, yeah, I mean, you moved. You then moved back home um, and, and your non-league career restarted again uh, um, for f- at the start of, of the current season, shall we call it, at Hemel Hempstead. Um, quite a weird one um, because odd that you were actually top goal scorer um, during, during your time at Hemel. Um, you were then and I'm not, I'm not going to sugarcoat this, released um, by, by Hemel um, and, and obviously picked up by, by Steve King and Dartford. Um, yeah, tell, tell us a little bit about Hemel and um, without going too much into it and, and why Hemel and, and how it ended up yeah, go, going the way it did. Yeah, so uh, obviously my loan spells at Leverhead, Concord, um, were both by manager Sammy Moore and Jack Midson. Um, they were both yep. there, so I, I spent, you know, both my loan spells at them. Uh, done very well. Um, really enjoyed it under them. Um, and then obviously they moved to to Hemel Hempstead. Um, rung me up after I come back from Cork and said I want you. So you know, we sat down and had a chat and said, look, like, I need this to have, to be my season. I need to be trusted. I need you to 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 trust everything in me and. He sat, my, me and my dad sat down with the chairman and Sammy and he said, like, you're, you're going to be the main player. Like, we're going to work the team around you. Um, and <laughs> so, so I, I just, I, I'm, sometimes I'm lost for words because I don't do nothing that I haven't done before, you know. And it's just the way that football goes is, you know, a lot that I could say. Um, but I'm not going to because... It wouldn't do myself any favours. I ain't going to get anything out of it. Um, and I'm sure that the cat will bite the tongue sooner or later. Well, some but, <laughs> but regardless, it's always, you know, stuff happens for a reason. And I found yeah. even better happiness and, and, you know, comfort at Dartford Football Club under Steve, um, who's been great since I've gone in. And the boy has top draw, so... Yeah, it's all it's all a blessing in disguise, really. Of course, and yeah, since I mean, you're going to Dartford as well. Um, would you, when you joined, did you think right? This is now like my time to settle down. This is my time to prove myself that like, I can settle down. And of course, 
make a name for yourself at Dartford? Like, how's that been? Yeah, I think, do you know what's like running through my head is, is, uh, is this kid a bad egg? Like, is everyone going to think that he's a bad egg because he's, he's going from team to team? Like, you know, no one's keeping him at a team for a season, etc. And that started to grate on me because, you know, I don't, I don't worry about other people's opinion. But when I know that, you know, they're being sugarcoated by maybe the actions of someone else, um, which they were, because they weren't the actions of me because I was doing everything right. Um, it frustrated me because I felt like, you know, I was getting a bad name for myself. Um, but, you know, I always score goals wherever I go. My stats don't lie. Like, regardless, you can look at every single stat that I've been at at every club and I've scored goals. So it's not like I haven't gone anywhere. I haven't done anything. So, yeah, like you say, it was more like proving myself right. Um, at the end of the day, it got to that point where I started to, you know, I have to say to myself, right, look, you need to proper kick on now. Um, and find, just like I said, comfort in a team um, and comfort in a manager again. Um, and thankfully, yeah, it's happened. And it's just, you know, disappointing that what went on, went on at the time that it did because I found myself, you know, in good form. Um, and us as a team, we found ourselves in unbelievable form. Um, and yeah, it's just disappointing. But hopefully it gets resolved and we can go back to that. Of course, and when you joined Dartford as well, like it could have been perceived as like, right, this is the time where you either sort of sink or swim. You can either sort of make a name for yourself here and really boost yourself, or you can obviously carry on obviously having short spells at clubs. But do you think that having like, like you said earlier, a supportive figure like your father also helps like really steady yourself? Oh, massively. Um, for anyone, you know, who calls them like who has a father figure maybe it be a brother or a dad or they need that stability because you know at the end of the day you go home to to all that with you you take it all with you you know off the pitch regardless if you're playing part-time football and you've got work elsewhere um you take all that football with you because football's my life and it always has been my life so I've always made that my first priority um and everything that goes on in foot in my football world I take it all on all on my back so my dad's always there to, to take it off of me as much as he can. But, yeah, it was, um, it was a sense that, I, as well as going at the time that I did in the season, because they were flying at the time, and I thought, Do you know what, I want to join a team that's, that's got this sort of momentum, that has this ambition that, you know, they want to get promoted and uh, be in that vibe and around it. Because I knew that I weren't going to walk into the team. I knew that with a choice that I made, you know, joining the club. Um, and the gaffer told me as well, he said, look, you've got to work yourself to get in the team. And I said, fine, perfect. So, it's, it ended up what I did do and it kept my head down and thankfully was given a chance and just took it. There we go. He's been brilliant, isn't he, as our first guest. Um, as always, um, a fantastic talker, a fantastic guy. Go and check out his Herbalife stuff on his Instagram. He's doing a wonderful thing. Um, he's got two promotions in, in just a, just a month, um, and he, he's Herbalife has been absolutely excellent. He's a, he's a wonderful footballer and a wonderful guy, um, and I'm sure that I'm sure we will catch up very very soon with him. Liam, thank you so much for your time. Thanks a lot. Cheers, mate. Jacob, Appreciate it as always. Thank you so much as well. Thank you, James. Cheers. <laughs> Check Thanks out all our social media, guys. Check out all of our. Um, it's a new platform we're building, um, and and we've got many more stories and many more footballers to come. Um, subscribe to our YouTube channel um, follow us on Instagram and Twitter um, and thank you for watching Inside the Changing Room Thank you very much, see you then Cheers, Ta.